Hello again guys, it's me Unstable Voltage and welcome back to How to Feed the Beast in Horizons. In previous videos we made both the pump and the DC electric engine from Rotarycraft, so now we've got both of those two items we're going to make our more powerful engine, the steam engine. Unlike the steam engine in many of the other mods, the Rotarycraft steam engine doesn't actually require any fuel, just a constant source of heat and water. Unlike the DC electric engine, which produces 4 newton meters at 256 rads per second and only outputs 1 kilowatt of power, the steam engine outputs at a much higher torque, 32 newton meters, at 512 radians per second, which gives us a total output of 16 kilowatts. So, in essence, the steam engine has higher torque than the DC electric engine and is 16 times more powerful. We're also going to take a look at this the cooling fin. The cooling fin can be required on the steam engine to prevent it from exploding. They're quite easy to build, so let's get on over to the workshop and put one together. So, while the DC electric engine is very cheap and easy to build, it doesn't give us a lot of power output, and sometimes we just need something with a bit more oomph. So that's why we're going to build the steam engine. I'm covering that next because it's still quite simple to build. There are a few things that you are going to need. You're going to need some steel, you're going to need some base panels, you're going to need a gold ingot, a shaft unit, and you're going to need an impeller. If you don't remember how to make an impeller, you take a steel gear. The steel gear is made by placing five pieces of steel in a cross pattern, which will give you three steel gears, but you only need the one. You then take that steel gear in the center of the crafting table with a piece of steel above, below and to either side and that gives you your impeller. So over at the work table, the impeller goes in the centre with three pieces of steel across the top, two base panels in either bottom corner, the gold ingot goes in the middle centre and also the shaft unit, a single shaft unit in the centre right slot. Now as you can see we still have a missing slot here on the left and for that we need a condenser. Back over to the crafting table and what you're going to need is five steel ingots, one in each of the four corners and one in the centre and then you're going to need four of the liquid pipes which we built when we were making our pump and that gives us our condenser. So back over to the work table, pop the condenser in the left hand side and there you go we have our steam engine. So let's take that out of the work table and we're going to go and pop it in place. So I have a little space for it here. I already have set up an infinite water source, a 2x2 two two square of water source blocks, a DC electric engine with a switch to turn it on and off, a pump and some liquid pipes. Now there is a hole here, the reason that's there is so I can get beneath the engine. I'm going to put the engine down right here, facing towards me. Now if we right click on the engine you can see in the interface we have a bar on the left, a bar on the right and this little icon in the centre. Now the bar on the left is how much water is in the steam engine, the bar on the right is the temperature and the little icon in the centre is to put in our fuel which in this case is water. Now you can do this by placing a bucket of water in the centre, that will empty the water out into the engine but you'll have to put about 10 buckets of water in before you even see this bar start to move. It really does take a lot of water to fill it up. So what I'm going to do, as you can see there's a little hole in the back of the engine. We're going to take some liquid pipes and we are going to connect our pump to the back of the engine. I'm going to turn on the DC electric engine just to get the pump going and that will slowly but inevitably fill the steam engine with water. Like with any steam engine, I'd highly recommend having water in the engine before you apply any heat source to it. So the reason I left myself a little block here was just so I could get underneath the engine. The block allowed me to place it, I'm going to dig that out. Now there are two ways you can actually power the engine with a heat source. One is to dig two blocks down, place a netherrack block two blocks below the engine so that you can light it on top with a flint and steel. That will put a permanent fire beneath the engine. Now a fire won't be hot enough to power the engine if you're in a cold biome such as uh, an arctic biome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the other source which is lava. But before I do that we're going to let it fill up with some water and we're going to go back to the workshop and build the cooling fin. Now the cooling fin is actually quite important because if you're using lava to power the steam engine 
it'll get so hot it'll actually explode. And if you are in a hot biome, such as a desert biome, you may even need a second cooling fin to stop the engine from exploding. Now, they're very easy to build. You're going to need three base panels. So you need three steel ingots in a row in a crafting table, which will give you base panels. You're also going to need six shaft units, and they are made by placing uh, three steel ingots in a diagonal line. We're going to do that twice so we can get ourselves six uh, rotary craft shafts and what we're going to do then is go back to the work table place the three base panels along the bottom and then fill the rest of the spaces with the shafts and that will give us our cooling fin so what we're going to do is take this back to the engine so here we are back at the engine and what we want to do is put the cooling fin on the engine. Now obviously you can't put the cooling fin on the back if you're pumping water in. You can't put the cooling fin in front because that's where you're going to connect something to the engine. You can't put the cooling fin below. So the three options you have is either on the top or either side. So it is possible to connect three cooling fins directly to the engine. You can pop it down simply by right clicking. Now as you can see the blue block was appearing through the ground. You can turn it around using the rotary craft screwdriver so that the cooling block is facing towards the engine. I like to put my cooling blocks on top of the engine where I can. Now as you can see by doing that and right clicking on the engine it just takes me to the engine's interface so you have to hold your default crouch button which is normally shift. So if you hold down the crouch button and right click on the top of the engine it'll place it there and it's already facing in the right direction. Now the engine hasn't started to heat up yet because we've got no source going into it. We do have water so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bucket of lava and I've got a dirt block ready because I'm going to need to fill this hole here on the right hand side. Technically I don't need to but it'll save any accidents, anybody falling in. So I'm going to place the bucket of lava in the block beneath and the dirt in this block here. So now we have our steam engine with a lava block beneath. If we right click on the steam engine interface you will see now that the temperature starts to rise on the right. Now it's still in the green. Now when it gets up into the yellow and orange, the engine will start. The only downside to the steam engine, apart from the fact it does have a chance to explode if it's not properly cooled, is you can't turn the steam engine on and off. Providing it's got heat and water going to it, it will run continuously once it's at temperature. You can't turn it on and off with a switch. So if you do have your steam engine connected to any kind of machine and you want to be able to turn off the power to it, you're going to need to put a clutch in between the engine and the machine so you can use a redstone signal to enable and disable the clutch. But that's something that I will cover in a future video. So the temperature's rising nicely. Now while it does, it's worth noting that even though with this setup we're using a DC electric motor to send water to the steam engine, what we could do once we have the steam engine up and running and actually have some water in there is we could use a system of shafts and connecting boxes to actually power the pump from the steam engine. So it's a very, very good way of being able to uh, get rid of the secondary engine. So there you can see the engine's got up to temperature. It's now running all on its own. I didn't need to start it or turn it on. It's a bit of a noisy engine. Now if we watch the temperature meter, you can see that it is climbing up into the yellow here. We are currently in a... Uh, what biome are we in? We're in a woodland biome, so the temperature is relatively normal. Now as you can see, with the cooling fin on, the temperature should level out around about here. Temperature isn't climbing anymore at the moment. It may flicker up and down slightly and just go beyond this line, but it shouldn't actually climb anymore. If it gets into the red, it will explode. It will leave you a nice big hole in the ground and destroy most of the blocks within a two block radius of the engine itself. So there you go. You now have a way of producing 16 times the amount of power that you get from a DC electric engine using a simple pump and water system and a cooling fin. So guys, thanks a lot for watching. Now you know how to create an even more powerful engine which will just basically run constantly without the need for you to pump fuel into it. On the next video, we're going to be taking the things that we've built previously and we're going to be doing something a little bit exciting. We're going to be looking at springs, which are rotary crafts equivalent to batteries, and we are going to be producing our first spring-powered weapon, the gravel gun, which is an absolutely fantastic way to defend yourself in Horizons. So, thanks again for watching, guys. Remember to like, share and subscribe because it really helps the channel to grow. And I'll see you next time. So until then, goodbye for now.